Thank you for tuning in to allforsynchronicity.com 2020 videos. In this video, we're going to give a brief overlook of synchronicities. Currently in our day and age with the internet, we find a lot of people coming up with this term. Some might say it's a new age term or something new in their realm. However, there's been a great amount of historical research on the term of synchronicities. And there's someone in particular who wrote several books along with several of his colleagues. Uh, if we take a look at Carl Jung and Arthur, we can find that many of them wrote some books that give us some insight to what they found in the 50s, 60s and 70s. And Carl Jung, if you wish to research, you can find him on the wiki and you can even find some of his books uh, one of the books that I've got some pieces to share with you is from The Root of Coincidences, which, if we delve deeper into, helps us find an overview for synchronicities and what they play a part in our life. So many people think of synchronicities like a pattern or a sign of numbers. You know, like if we take an engine as an example, it needs to run in a synchronistic form, otherwise the combustion doesn't happen. There's a simple scientific look into synchronicities. But synchronicities with consciousness often ties to a piece otherwise spoken of as extrasensory perception. And in the 1800s, there were some people who came with telepathy or uh, clairvoyances. And, you know, some of this might be looked upon as a hypnosis of some form. But the books that's been created by Carl Jung and Arthur, they've broken down these pieces into um, their own categories. So synchronicity itself plays a greater part in all of those things. And in this presentation, we're hoping to share just that wisdom. So first of all, what is synchronicity in the form of a scientific breakdown? And the diagram on the bottom here with the cross, this is from Carl Jung. And in there, he's breaking down where he found synchronicities all on its own. So for those that may have tuned in, I ask a simple question. Have you ever experienced coincidences so incredible that it left you stunned? Now, if you take a look in your lives, you probably find the answer several times over and over again. Here's a piece of extraction from Carl's book. And you can see here he speaks of the phenomenon of extrasensory perception and how it plays into coincidences and so forth. Once again, you can check out that on the wiki page. Um, so cause and effect and the illusion that we're all in. Now, many might think the illusion's all dark and, you know, there's so much sadness and so forth. But in all things, there are synchronicities. So we ask the question, how much has chance played the role in your life? Think about how you met your partner, how you got your first job. Have strange encounters with dramatical change in your life. It isn't enough to just plan your future. You've got to have luck on your side. In fact, you must have luck on your side without it. Whatever you do will go wrong. So there's a great piece of synchronicities in all of our lives. So chance and luck. Don't, you, don't believe it? Read about how the rich and famous got the way. Look carefully at their life stories. How did they do it? Do you think they are so much smarter than you? Or I? Were there no other intelligent, young, beautiful, hopefuls, maybe more talented? What became of them? They never got the big break. They weren't in the right place at the right time. Why don't people believe in chance? Well, this is uh, why I've made the video. Just to help you get more chance draw more synchronicities into your own lives. The key 
is always in our hand. Chaos theory is something that we can use in another episode. However, at this time we'll take a quick glimpse into the Freemasonry Encyclopedia. As we can see historically, they have came to a greater understanding or comprehension of dark to light or ignorance to light. And in here, as you can see, Ordo Ab Chaos or Order Out of Chaos. This is meant by light coming to those when they were in darkness, much like the cosmo cosmology story of our universe. In this episode, we'll attempt to keep to our synchronicities and later we'll delve deeper into the Freemasonry or the wider uh, cosmology topic, the butterfly effect. And any butterfly, you know, has to go through a death and a resurrection as something else, which is the truth behind the butterfly symbolism and, of course, the effect. So there's a glimpse into the chaos theory, which is the butterfly. So any movement, no matter how small, is eventually felt by all of us. This is the key to synchronicity. Doesn't matter how small, it's got a massive effect. It's like the epiphany. So everything past, present and future is always linked. The pattern is infinitely long. It's amazing. And the wider we see, the more we know. That's what it's all about. So let's delve into it. So we are connected by unknown forces. This is uh, pretty much the law of one, you know. All things are in one. We unconsciously telegraph our thoughts. There is no separation between you or anyone or anything. Everything is connected. And currently in our scientific fields, people have spoken about this and they're coming to a point where they're actually able to conclude that we are connected. It doesn't matter where we are, how far apart we are. They manipulate a molecule on the right and it changes on the left. And this has been proven by the scientists. And if we look at the CERN and all those brainiacs and what they've released, then we can see confirmations on these knowledge. So thoughts and energy. What is a thought? Is it yours? Is the thought someone else's? Energy. Is energy something that's destroyed once it's used? Is energy infinitely there? These are the things that scientists have been seeking to conclude for so long. And when we look back in all the histories, all the religions, there's many wisdom people, gurus, yogis, whatever you want to call them, all these people have been telling the truth for thousands of years. And here we are at a scientific precipice where scientists are actually going back to these mystics with confirmation saying, and surprised that the truth was in front of them all along. So what's the power of our thoughts? What's the power of energy? And this is the state of our civilization as we learn. According to the law of physics, energy and matter cannot be created or destroyed. Your thoughts are energy. Therefore, your thoughts can never be destroyed. Thoughts are immortal. In this uh, section, we're going to look at energy, observer's effects, and much more, and delve deeper into how synchronicities are with you, and they're there to be used as a tool at your will. So in this section, we'll look at this and see how we can share more wisdom. So the observer's effect. For many centuries, and much more, people have run many experiments to prove that we need to be participating in life events to see things. And some time ago, scientists realized that these 
thoughts, our need to attend something, is actually true. And this double slit experiment helps prove to the modern man that you actually need to be there in order to witness something. So this one experiment is another confirmation of human consciousness from the thought observation role. A cat hears and sees a different range of light and sounds than humans. Does that mean because we can't see what cats see, it isn't there? The surprising answer is sometimes yes. According to quantum physics, when you look at something, you bring that something into reality. When you turn away, it no longer exists. It only appears when you or someone else observes it. And this is your reality that we live in. What you see is only accurate and complete for you. It's your interpretation, your view of the world. And the internal reality is your thoughts. Scientists can clone, duplicate using a single cell. All the information about the whole is in the single cell. We all begin as a single cell. In each cell, all knowledge of life is present. A Nobel Prize winner, uh, Eric Kandel, uh, he learnt the mind effect, or he helped demonstrate the mind effect can turn on these additional cells in our body. And if we delve into his works, we can find some evidence in there how that they took this knowledge to a scientific uh, provable way, which is truly another confirmation of consciousness in synchronicities. So single cells and our eyes. Our eyes are shaped with inbound information. As we believe we look out, we're actually looking inward. And the illusion of seeming like we are looking out is just that, the illusion of looking out. Scientists have helped prove in these last years, decades, uh, that we are actually looking inward. And if we look at the information that's out there in regards to cone cells, our eyes, we can actually see these confirmations. Not only this, but this information was written thousands of years ago and it's continued to be handed down through yogis, verbal teachings, illustrations. Everything is just, in this last decades, being confirmed in a more deeper way and hopefully a way that everybody can digest. So here's our eye, and you can look into this on Wiki. So consciousness, your thoughts, create everything in your future. Your mind cannot be located in space and time. It is everywhere at the same time. Just tapping into it is the key. Your mind goes beyond time and space and creates them energy fields which are unobservable and influence matter. Your mind produces an energy field that stretches across the universe. These fields cannot be measured. They are invisible forces. So what use is it, me sharing this insight into synchronicities? What is in it for you? So here we share a deeper perspective of building on synchronicities and being able to tap into this invisible force that comes from the divine source. So here is the largest part of working your mind into sight of synchronicities or perhaps as some might have seen numbers showing up over time and time and time and time again, moments that amaze you or perhaps you think of someone and out of the blue they write to you or 
the, the phone rings and it's, it's them. So this is what's in it for you. And this is what is in it for me. It's the synchronicity key and that how your brain, our brain, won't process information that doesn't expect to see. If you're never expecting to see a synchronicity, then you'll never accept it. It's all about belief in the extraordinary, the perception and foresight that there's something beyond. And that's what's in it for you. It's the stepping away from the life world of indoctrinations, the fear factors, the unequivocal chance that the universe is always there for you. You know, it's, it's the stepping away from the old and walking into the new. So belief in triggers for synchronicity, the law of attraction and psychic abilities. Many might think psychics are a new age term, but it really goes back much more. And in the 1800s, there was many lectures that expanded people's minds. There was great yogis that traveled to America. Uh, take Yogananda as an example. He, he set out to just share abilities, let alone the term psychic. And the key is always inward, inbound in yourself. It's growing your own intuition, growing your own acceptance, stabilizing your beliefs in you. And this will in turn on the law of attraction and allow your universal uh, overview. So emotions. Emotions is key to everything in the sense that you are creating energy. So whenever you're sad, this is a very potent energy and it's not recognized truly in its original form. And when you're happy, once again, this is another energy force, which some of us fail to actually realize its power and what it does to others near and far. And remember, we're all linked. So whenever we have an emotion, that field of unseen and visible is actually sensing it. It doesn't matter how small that effect has been to others, but the effect has been and is being. So synchronicities tend to happen when you need it. And you noticed when you were ready to receive something. This is the key. Synchronicities, if you arrive a few seconds earlier or later, they wouldn't have turned up at the same time. It's drawing upon energies and belief to draw upon more synchronicities in your life. This is the key. So what is a synchronicity? Is synchronicity a unconscious awareness of something that will come? Is it tapping into psychic abilities? Is it a scientific form? There's great writings by many people and I've shared their names throughout this episode. And hopefully I'm encouraging a lot of you to pick up some books and read them. There's even in our age, authors that are still with us writing books, The Keys to Synchronicity. And they're trying to show straightforward approaches and how that they have benefited from the universe and synchronicities. The key is people and things just appear at the exact right moment. So synchronicities is an unconscious awareness of life. It is a set of messages. The messages are life-changing. Synchronicities is an unexpected or impossible coincidence that cannot be explained by luck or chance. It is also a prophecy or a protector of the future. When you are in sync with things that you want, you are much more likely to meet the things 
that is what similar people always seem to meet. They are tuned to the same frequency. This is the keys, and the keys are always in your hands. Synchronicities is a mirror, and whatever you believe will be reflected in your life. If you agree with the law of synchronicity, then you connect more deeply and send out a strong message, which creates more synchronicities and coincidences in your favor. You are in harmony with what you seek. The secret of synchronicity is to be consciously aware. And the receiving side of synchronicities is usually shown in coincidences. This is when the universe is taking its biggest attempt to talk to you. And many people, they never recognize the true coincidences and the true message can take a lot of time for us to see beyond the five senses and accept what is coming and what we sent out. Uh, it's pretty much like the mirror of awareness or the mirror of the conscious side. So the more coincidences we have, the closer we are to the divine source. and. Many would say the intensity allows everyone to synchronize faster. Make a decision. Believe it with your heart and soul. These are the keys to synchronicities in our, our, our lives. Synchronicities and chance can also operate in reverse. And meaningful coincidences can be unpleasant if you say, I'm going to be late, or I'm unlucky, then the law will work against you. We have an insufficient understanding of coincidences, and as we evolve as a society, civilization, we will hopefully share greater wisdoms and work together to expand others' awarenesses. So these five senses that we're limited to in the sense of what is physical doesn't mean that we don't have more senses and the limitation of our illusion allows us to rely on these five senses but if we develop a sixth sense then we're tapping into our inner intuition and this is the part that we're free to do and gives us greater access to cross time space it's one of those keys how do we let the universe talk to us these are often a question that people ask and share to me it's they've seen a synchronicity through numbers or they're finding themselves giving their newly learned wisdom to others and this is actual coincidences. And it's the universe saying, well, you need to help here. You should benefit there. And this is the key to knowing that we're on that path. It's paying attention to the invisible force in our own life and allowing synchronicity to bless us in some absolute amazing coincidental ways. It's really letting go of ourselves and working around the unseen side. Um, many people will speak about tapping into a higher self, and this is defining your current self as a lower being, which is once again a mistaken terminology. And this locks away some of the abilities to receive more coincidences, more synchronicities. So the unconscious awareness, the more deeply you connect, the more synchronicities you will encounter, the more you learn about synchronicities and the easier it will be for you to see the moment of synchronicities happen in your life. And this is why we shouldn't define ourselves as a lower or a higher being. The key is always believing in yourself, having the faith. So believing is the hardest part. If you can overcome this, 
you can become invincible. To make that event a certainty, you must believe with certainty. Be assuming you add psychic energy to the event. Synchronicities, to limit, to have limitless synchronicities in your life, you must first let go of past beliefs. As I mentioned earlier, many people speak about these numbers and how that they've been recently seeing a lot of numbers in their life. The biggest one that I hear of is the 1111. People will find it keep coming up from time to time or they'll go to the clock at 2.30 every time. You know, this is a, a moment in sync. Well, the universe speaks to us in many ways, ranging from synchronicities of bumping into people to our awareness looking at something. The key is recognizing where the thought came from and why or who is connected to the point in time. So the 1111 is different for everyone. The myth of it being a DNA trigger and all these things is pretty much all myths. The key to knowing is just recognizing the pattern within your own life. So if you're finding 1111, then perhaps the question that you've been asking is actually being answered in that 1111 moment for you. Um, this is the elevated awareness where you can actually separate yourself from divisional issues in this world. Intuition. Intuition is a belief, acceptance, in your self, an awareness of your internal synchronicities. Once we start to remove the veils of ignorance and step towards actual truths, we start to, to increase our own intuition, learning what our internal chakra system does for us and starting to tap into awarenesses of synchronicities of the divine source. And the key is always in ourselves. It's not listening to someone else like me or others. It's looking within yourself and building your own comprehensions and allowing you to remove the hidden structure of life. The keys is always within individuals. It's never beyond yourself or outward in this world. The outward part is the illusion that we're all meant to truly enjoy. And often people get lost to darkness, sadness, misinformation, and they chase it to the end of their time. And they never really have an opportunity to tap into the amazing inner intuitions that's all in ourselves. And if we could have more people recognizing their own intuitions and tapping into it, they would find that the world of synchronicity comes more in their hand in an every daily basis, perhaps every hour. It, it, it could be truly amazing the more people recognize internal truths through looking inward and le learning from themselves rather than looking out to find a bit of information out there. So creating your own future, there are steps to help yourselves with extrasensory perception, drawing on the divine source and allowing yourselves to come forward into a new awakening, a, a step of controlling a synchronicity, a higher spiritual awarenesses. And in, in future episodes, I hope to delve deeper into extrasensory perception and the hundreds of years of study that's been shared and documented around ESP. So please tune in again and we look forward to meeting you sometime in the near future. Thank you. Goodbye.